Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, we're looking at something pretty significant in global health. It's the, uh, the long search for an HIV vaccine. Decades of work. For a long time, it felt almost impossible, didn't it? But, well, things might be changing. Okay, let's unpack this. Yeah, it's really fascinating just how stubborn this challenge has been scientifically. HIV, uh, it just works differently than many viruses, making standard vaccines tricky for, well, decades. But what's interesting now, and our source from Region Riverina points this out, is that we might actually be, quote, one step closer. And that phrase, one step closer, it really means something here, given the history. It really does. So, yeah, our main source today is that article from Region Riverina. It covers some really um, promising new developments on the vaccine front, and it includes insights from Dr. Brian Sengstock at Charles Sturt University. Plus, it touches on testing and uh, elimination efforts, especially in Australia. Right. So... Our goal today, our mission, if you like, is to really dig into these developments. We want to understand the science, you know, what's actually making this possible now, and then connect that to the bigger picture, public health, what's happening in places like Australia, and maybe even what you listening can think about or do. Okay, let's get right into it then. The big news. The main thing is that early stage clinical trials for an HIV vaccine are showing promise, real promise. This isn't just theory anymore. Exactly. And what makes this particular progress so exciting is the technology behind it. It's mRNA. This new vaccine, it comes from researchers at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center, and it uses that same mRNA tech we saw with, well, with many COVID-19 vaccines. Ah, okay. So that connection is obviously huge. We saw how fast things moved with COVID. It is huge. Not just the speed potential, but the way mRNA works. See, older approaches really struggled because HIV is so good at, well, hiding. But mRNA, it's different. It gives our cells instructions. In this case, instructions to potentially spot the virus even when it's trying to hide inside our cells. That's the key insight here. It's about equipping our own cells to find that hidden target. It's a real shift. That makes sense. But, you know, it does beg the question, if mRNA is this powerful and we vaccinate against so many things, why has HIV been such a difficult nut to crack for so long? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? And Dr. Sengstock touches on this. Remember, he's leading that big research initiative on HIV preventive care access. He points out the main problem has always been HIV's unique ability to hide. It doesn't just stick to the outside of a cell like lots of viruses. He says it actually goes into the inside elements of the cell. It gets right in there. Right, it integrates itself. So if it's hiding deep inside, our immune system just yeah. struggles to find it, to target it effectively, like yeah. a microscopic game of hide and seek, and the virus is just incredibly good at it. That's a perfect analogy. And because it hides so well, our main tool for years hasn't been prevention, but treatment. Antiretroviral therapies, ART. ART uses a combination of drugs taken every day to keep the virus in check. And ART has been absolutely life-changing. It stops the virus multiplying, prevents AIDS, lets people live long, healthy lives, and crucially stops transmission too. That's huge for public health. Absolutely revolutionary. But, and this is a really important, but ART isn't a cure. If someone stops taking their art meds, the virus, which is hiding out in reservoirs in the body, can come back. It can rebound. So that just highlights why we still desperately need a preventative vaccine, something permanent. Okay, so that constant underlying threat really puts this new vaccine research into perspective. If hiding inside cells is HIV's main trick, how does this new mRNA approach actually tackle that? How does it find it? Right. This is where it gets really interesting. According to Dr. Sengstock, the vaccine is designed specifically to address that. He says it works on actually going into the cell and finding the HIV virus." Unquote. It essentially helps the immune system to identify and work against the virus inside the cell. Wow. So it's not just waiting for the virus to show itself, it's actively going in after it. Pretty much. It's about enabling that internal surveillance and attack, which is something previous attempts really struggled with. That sounds like a genuine breakthrough in strategy. Yeah. But okay, let's manage expectations. What's the timeline look like? When might we actually see a vaccine people can get? Yeah, good question. Dr. Sengstock expresses confidence. He says he's reasonably confident we will get a functional, affordable vaccine eventually. That's encouraging, coming from him. But he's also realistic. He says, probably not within the next two or three years. I think it will be much longer than that. Okay, so it's still a marathon, not a sprint. But the confidence is growing. Exactly. He adds, but I'm certainly increasingly confident we will see a vaccine for the actual treatment of HIV. So the hope is definitely becoming more solid. And it's worth mentioning Australia's role in all this, right? The research effort. There. Oh, definitely. Australia provides strong research support. 
The article notes it's really at the forefront of HIV research among developed nations. They're making significant contributions. And alongside the research, there's a national goal too, isn't there? Something about elimination. Yes, a very ambitious one. Australia is committed to the virtual elimination of HIV transmission by 2030. By 2030, wow. It aligns with the global WHO goals, and they've already seen some success. The article mentions achieving virtual elimination in specific areas like inner Sydney back in August 2023. That area has a large gay population, so it shows it's possible even in high prevalence settings. That's incredible. Those local successes must provide a roadmap, some hope for the bigger goal. They absolutely do. And, you know, this progress isn't just about science. The social context matters, too. We're seeing positive changes there as well. Like the change in blood donation rules. The source mentioned the Australian Red Cross life plate easing restrictions for men and transgender women who have sex with men. Precisely. That kind of policy shift is so important. It helps chip away at the stigma that's sadly uh, often surrounded HIV. Reducing stigma encourages more people to engage with testing, prevention, and care. It's all connected. So we have promising science, ambitious goals, and a slowly improving social climate. Bringing it back to the individual listener. What are the key actions people can take right now? Well, Dr. Sengstock gives some very clear advice, especially based on clinical guidelines. For men or transgender women who are sexually active with other men, the recommendation is getting tested for HIV every three months, or at least uh, once a year. Regular testing is still fundamental. And testing is getting easier and easier, isn't it? It offers peace of mind. The article mentions free HIV testing kits supported by the Commonwealth in Australia. You can get them sent to you, even from vending machines in some places. That accessibility is key. And the tests themselves are simpler now. Dr. Sangstock describes it. It's just like a COVID test. It's a finger prick, dry blood test, and 20 minutes later, it will tell you yes or no. 20 minutes. That removes a lot of the old barriers and anxieties around testing. Absolutely. And of course, if someone does test positive, yes. it's just vital they connect with a doctor straight away. Getting onto RT quickly means living a long, healthy life and stops transmission. It protects you and protects others. Right. So wrapping this up, what does this all mean for you, our listener? We've seen this new hope from mRNA technology, maybe finally cracking the code HIV has used to hide. We've acknowledged the huge challenges, but also how scientists are finding clever ways around them. And we've seen how countries like Australia are really pushing forward, both in research and aiming for elimination. Yeah, the takeaway is really twofold, I think. On one hand, there's incredible scientific momentum. A future with an HIV vaccine feels, well, more possible than ever. But on the other hand, the tools we have right now, easy, accessible testing and highly effective treatment are still absolutely crucial. We need both. We do. And maybe a final thought to leave you with. Just imagine that future. Imagine when one step closer finally becomes mission accomplished for HIV. What does that world look like for health? for stigma, for connection, and how do the actions we all take today, getting tested, staying informed, supporting access to care, how do they help build that future? It's not just up to the scientists, it's a collective effort. 